Welcome to weekly UAS news update, and we have three stories for you, exciting stories for you this week. The first one is New York City is proposing to approve drones to fly in the city. Woohoo! Well, let's not get too excited. Let's see what happens. Uh, Aloft Air Control has released a new API. We're going to have actually John from Aloft talking to us about this. And then lastly, some drone leaks, a few of them. So let's get to it. All right, and the first story this week is kind of a big one. Uh, there is some movement as far as flying drones in New York City. Uh, maybe movement, maybe not any movement. Uh, I decided to uh, reach out to Vic Moss, Vic from the Drone Service Provider Alliance. It's been a while since uh, Vic has been on the show. I think last time was we were in Denver. Uh, we did that live show together. So Vic, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. A lot of fun. Thanks for having me, as always. Yep. So maybe we can go back a little bit and talk to people that maybe don't know the current limitations that exist in New York City uh, regarding flying a drone. Can, can you currently fly a drone in New York City without any additional approval? Uh, no. <laughs> well, you can if you're in, you know, AMA has a couple of fields there, that kind of thing. Um, but if yep. you're outside of that, um, you have to go through... It's basically illegal unless you, unless you jump through a whole bunch of hoops, usually involving the film commission. Yeah. Yep. yep. And so this proposal here, this is from the New York City Police Department. I'm kind of reading the PDF that uh, was given. And then they're saying what we are proposing, uh, New York City PD is proposing to amend the rules to create a procedure by which members of the public may submit applications to launch and land an unmanned aircraft, including a drone, within New York City. Well, this sounds like great news, right? It, it is. It, it's wonderful news if you're a million-dollar production company putting together a big-budget video video or big, but big, big budget movie using drones in New York city. Um, otherwise it's just another way for uh, New York city to prohibit drones. If it goes through as proposed, I mean, it's as proposed. No, it, it, it's, it's not really good at all. <laughs> Honestly, I was excited so when I heard you, about it until I read it. I know I was until we started talking about this. Uh, can you walk us through maybe the application process? What is being proposed right now? What are the, the things and what are the sticky points that uh, maybe we don't like too much? And then we'll talk about how people can actually submit comments on all of this. Oh, sure, sure. Um, it's First of all, it's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages long. I've never seen wow. a city <laughs> a city ordinance proposal this long when it comes to drones. Um, it's, it's just the requirements to go with uh, that they're that they're proposing. This is just proposal. We need to remember that, and, and we hopefully have a whole lot of input on this. Uh, but they're proposing everything from a 30-day advance notice. Again, fine if you're a uh, uh, production company. $150 non-refundable deposit. Um, grab my notes here. Uh, and there's no time frame for the denial or approval. You know, you, they get, you use, they say you have to give us 30 days notice. Well, that's fine, but they may come back 29 days later and say, yeah, no, you can't fly here. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's problematic. Uh, they have a data privacy policy, which is kind of strange, uh, considering how many people walk around New York City with their phones taking pictures, all the tourists and everything. Um, you know, going through uh, going through Central Park, and I and I get that that sometimes you do need a data data uh, privacy policy as a business, um, but why do they have this? Um, why is this necessary? Really, it's not really what they want you to do. And that includes things like, uh, let me pull this up real quick here. You have to have notifications, first of all. Um, you have to notify the, let me find, see, it's so long, I can't find my notes in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you have to have insurance, which is a good thing, but it's a $4 million aggregate policy, which a lot of people will not carry. I carry a $5 million policy, so that wouldn't be that big a deal. Um, but here you go. Um, this is what you have to do if you get approval. After, after you spend your $150 that you will not get, not get back. Notify each community board of the community district or districts where the unmanned aircraft is anticipated to capture or transmit still images, audio, or video. And each member of the city council of the district or districts where unmanned aircraft is anticipated to capture blah, 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 blah of the following. Um, an unmanned aircraft, blah, 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 is being utilized in their district. The takeoff and landing site designated on the permit. The date and time of the takeoff of the unmanned aircraft. The date and time of the landing of the unmanned aircraft. The expected duration of the unmanned aircraft operation. Applicants' contact information, information, including name and telephone number. So that's just the first notification. After you get approval, after you go through all this and you notify everybody and their brother who has anything to do or has a, you know, has a title in New York City, you then have to post notices where the unmanned aircraft, blah, 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 
um, including the name and telephone number of a representative of the applicant. And the permittee may post such notices on poles, trees, and other sim similar city-owned <laughs> structures, provided that if the permittee posts such notices on trees, elastic bands, and string must be used. Tape is prohibited. The permittee wow. must remove all signs, including tape, which you're not allowed to use upon completion of the permit. So <laughs> there's so much wrong with it that that it really is, in my opinion, it's just another way for New York City to prohibit drones. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's basically, <laughs> it's, a, it's a process that is unachievable, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, at mm -hmm. this stage. So um, yeah. the good news is, well, I don't know if it's a good news or not, but the, there is a possibility for people to submit comments. Uh, and this, oh, yeah. uh, they, they will have a public hearing on this on July 7th at 10 a.m., at the auditorium at uh, One Police Plaza, which I'm guessing is the the police department in New York I City. Would, I would name it that. Yep. And then, uh, so you have different ways you can do it. You can, anyone, they say anyone can comment. You can go to the website. You don't have to go to the hearing. You can send an email. We'll put all these links down in the description. You can send mail, you can send a fax, or you can even request to speak at the hearing. You'll have to send your question ahead of time and sign up uh, in order to do this. But um, you can write all these comments until July 7th. So that gives a little bit of time. If you live in the area, if you plan on flying, if you've had the opportunity but couldn't in the past uh, fly in New York City, I would highly recommend that you voice your concerns if you have any and that uh, you let them know what you would like to see and, and how this process can be made easier uh, in order to fly in there. Um, what else can we uh, talk about, Vic, for this? Well, I think even if you're not in New York City, you really ought to look at this pretty hard. If you have no plans on going to New York City, um, you need to look at this really hard because what's going to happen is if New York City passes this, you're going to see a lot of other cities. I live in Denver. You live near you live near Phoenix, another large city. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to look at this and go, hey, look what New York did. Let's do the same thing. Yep. Uh, and we're yep. going to be back to square one with so much. So many of us, including you and me and scores of your listeners, have, uh, have done to fight to make sure this kind of stuff doesn't happen. So even if you have no plans for going to New York, I think you, I'm yeah. certainly going to do it. And I have no plans to go into work to New York, definitely. No, I agree. I agree. I think uh, th this has been interesting. The last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of these proposals for rules, and they're getting more and more stringent on uh, on drone pilots. And we're not even talking about this DJI thing from last week. So uh, <laughs> right. I think we need to... Uh, yeah, we need to stand united in this case and then kind of let them Absolutely. know. I, I think it's good that they're finally opening up to the idea because this has mm -hmm. been a restriction. This is an old avigation law from a long, long time ago that I think the 40s? Stem, yeah, from the 40s, yeah. I think 1946. Yeah. So uh, this is something that, you know, it's good that they're opening the, the, the doors to the idea of this happening. So let's, let's be uh, cordial. Let's make sure that you guys are polite if you're going to send these messages and then uh, try to well, bring some sense into them and hopefully we can get something. Right. Anything else? Right. Def uh, no, I think that's it. Definitely, definitely want to be cordial. Um, don't quite have the same attitude I had just a few minutes ago <laughs> talking about it um, because uh, it's just, you know, be professional. And those who know me and know Greg that we are professional uh, in the situations like this. So um, yep. put the word out, make sure you get your comments in um, and let's swamp them with uh, swamp them with ideas. Yep. I agree. All right, Vic, thanks for your time. And we'll uh, you. talk to you very soon. All right. All right. Stay safe. All right, and our second story this week is about Aloft. Uh, you may know the app uh, Air Control from Aloft that they released a, a couple, well, a couple months ago now. Uh, and we're going to be talking about a major update that they released this week, which is kind of exciting because we might see Aloft in more places now. And I thought, who better to talk about this than the CEO of Aloft, uh, John Agranis, which is uh, he's with us right now. So, John, welcome to the show. Cool. Hey, Greg. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. So you guys have been busy uh, doing new updates, and can you tell us a little bit more about this new release and what uh, it means for Loft, and then uh, maybe what it means for the users and where they're going to see a Loft now? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this has really been a year plus in the making in terms of how do we, um, really the core element that we we're trying to solve is how do we get Lance in front of more people? Um, we, we've done some different studies, looked at compliance rates, and we know that um, as much as Lance is growing, last year the FA announced a million Lance milestone, for example. Um, we know that it's still not reaching enough people. Um, and so looking at today's use cases, how do you get Lance in front of drone pilots today? Uh, but also thinking about the future. How do you enable uh, one-to-many operations? How do you enable 
BB loss and really these advanced kinds of use cases. And the answer for both of those is you need a programmatic LAN solution. You need to be able to embed LANs capabilities in different applications, in different control centers, in different apps. And so that's really what we accomplished with FA was saying, um, let's create a framework by which you don't have to go to the Aloft app to get LANs through Aloft. You can embed it in different places. So we're really excited to see where this goes, right? This could be um, right in, in your uh, flight app that you use. So you in a specific drone, maybe they can build it right in there so you don't have to bounce around to different applications. Maybe uh, you think about drone in a box or delivery, maybe um, those more scalable solutions need this embedded. So I think it's, it's big for the industry to um, have just a lot more options and capabilities. Yeah, so now it's in the hands of developers that are building apps and or even have, like you said, their own their own delivery uh, workflow. And then now they can actually add a loft straight into it without having to themselves get lens approval, which we know is is uh, time consuming, expensive, and then building the, the whole back end, which you guys have done. I'm sure the first question we're going to get from people is, can I get this into my DJI app so that I can get only not only DJI approval, but right away get also uh, lens approval. So that's a potentiality, right? If uh, if, uh, if DJI decided to do this? Yeah, I think obviously DJI would have, uh, you know, some uh, specifics to get around. You know, we, we know what that's like, but um, it's not impossible. And I, I think as long as um, you're able to meet our rules and guidelines and requirements, you're able to meet the FA's rules and guidelines, it, it's really, um, it's really open, right? So uh, yeah. this becomes less about, um, specific UI elements, like make it your own, right? If you're in, uh, you know, I imagine Sony's app would look different from DJI's, for example. I'm sure that would look different mm -hmm. from uh, a drone in a box solution and what what kind of workflows they need. Um, so I think that sort of freedom is is what's powerful. And, and kind of as we've seen, it's hard to be a USS. It's, uh, as you point out, it takes a lot of time, technical expertise, a lot of security requirements. And I think yep. that makes sense when you're directly interfacing with FA systems, like there should be that higher bar. Um, but what this does is it creates a different bar to embed that approved authoritative solution into what you're doing. So um, I, I've been there, you know, it, when you, when, anytime you have to go to a different app or go to a different site for something, it's easy to forget. And yep. I think, uh, you know, what uh, is interesting is you don't have to, re for example, to implement this, like you don't have to recreate every single Lance feature. Maybe there's one or two that would work with your users, right? If you're mm -hmm. um, some photo, you know, gathering social light, who knows, whatever it is, like you might have a very simple need to just, hey, how do I quickly request Lance from yeah. for my users? Uh, it could look a lot different if you were an enterprise um, operation that's now saying, hey, I don't need to have my users in the app all the time. We can bring this into our claim center for yeah. uh, for processing. So it's going to look yeah. a lot different for who you are, but that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it, exactly. That's the beauty of the API and bringing this in there. Well, this is really exciting. Uh, I'm sure you have other projects now that you're working on. Is there anything that you can tell us that we can get excited about, Lance, in the future? Uh, I mean, I think... I'm super excited just about Lance overall. And I, you know, I think uh, it was easy to kind of say, hey, are we stagnating, right? Like how is Lance was supposed to be, you know, version one of the, these kind of UTM capabilities. Um, mm -hmm. There have been key pieces added, um, but we know that it needs to keep evolving. Um, and hopefully we're going to see that with uh, new regulations that come out around PV loss, for example, right? There's just going to be yep. a lot of new elements. So um, I think this, just gives momentum to USSs and the Lance industry to say, "Hey, um, we're we're evolving." Um, yeah, I guess one thing that uh, you know, I'll pretty a little bit other stuff that we're working on is um, it's not just here in the US anymore. There's a lot of places, a lot of countries, a lot of uh, regions that are quickly moving forward with with U space, with UTM, with Lance like yep. systems, and they've seen what's possible in the US and say, like, hey, we can do stuff similar. So we're starting to um, see where we can go um, now that those are, are a lot more concrete than, than they have been in the past. 
start to expand. That's awesome. Well, John, thanks for your time. And we always uh, look forward to hearing more about what you guys are doing. It's always exciting. And then we'll hopefully we'll talk to you very soon. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. All right. Thank you. And your final story this week is some drone leaks. And yes, we've got leaks of the uh, DJI Air 3 and then also a new potential Autel Robotics release. Uh, the Air 3, let's get started with that. Um, Amazon and B&H uh, both appear to have leaked the Air 3 using uh, advertising and confirming the upcoming launch. Uh, unfortunately, there's no pricing at this stage or really a whole lot of specs. Uh, we are expecting a one inch sensor and then priced around $1,000. Uh, these specs would be right in between the Mavic 3 Classic and then the Mini 3 Pro, which is where you would want that drone to sit anyway. So uh, we'll keep you updated if uh, we see more. Now, in the meantime, if you're into the Mavic 3, uh, we just posted a really cool video. Make sure that you go uh, check it out. We spent quite a bit of time creating this thing and we had a ton of fun. And I think the, uh, the final product is pretty funny. So if you need a, a quick pickup today, make sure you head over there and take a look at that. Uh, as far as Autel, uh, there might also be a new release from Autel, uh, something that would be like a larger drone to compete with the Matrice 300 or the Matrice 350. Uh, in a press release this week, the company announced that uh, the new product will be on display at the Energy Drone and Robotics Summit that's in Houston, uh, and that would include the Autel Alpha and the Autel Titan. So these are new models. We're excited to see uh, what's, uh, well, what, what they're going to say about this. Uh, they're both so far unreleased drones, and then uh, they're going to be on display at the event. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Tune in. Make sure you go watch that video. It's really fun, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.